watch. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the number one mistake that real estate agents like you are making. And how do I know this? Because I used to make this mistake. So I wanna share with you a story that helped me discover this mistake. And also I'm gonna share with you some steps, step-by-step -step on how you can actually fix this mistake. So stay tuned and let's get to it. I remember it was 2014 and I was just fulfilling one of my biggest dreams ever, it was on my vision board, to go to the World Cup in Brazil. We went there for about three weeks. I took my family there. I followed games clear across Brazil. We went to live games. I watched Lionel Messi score the first goal of the tournament. We watched at pubs, we went to beaches. We just had a ton of freaking fun with the World Cup. Now, I was selling about 75 homes a year at the time and while I was in Brazil, I had my assistant back home, still coordinating with her closing deals and making money. However, after the World Cup, I got home and I closed out a couple more deals and then I started to feel the well dry up. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but while the well dried up, I had realized that if I stopped working, the money stopped working. And here was the number one mistake that I was making is that I had put myself in a position to only thrive in a transactional base. Meaning if I'm out working, I'm being a business operator and I'm out there meeting with sellers and buyers, I'm putting deals together. But if I'm not, I got no money coming in. And that's a big freaking problem when you decide to go three weeks into Brazil. And it gave me the taste of geographic freedom where I actually didn't wanna work as hard as I was working to continue to make the money I was making to sustain my lifestyle. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard spot is I didn't really wanna work doing that level of production anymore, but if I stopped, I couldn't pay for my lifestyle. So here's what I did to solve the problem. The first thing I said to myself is, I had to go where the margins are bigger. Now there's a couple directions you can go with that. Is one is I can do bigger deals, which I started to do that immediately. Now even if my deal was only like a $500,000 deal, I just charge more commission. That's right. I would charge 7% instead of 6% and I'd offer a 2.5% BAC and I keep 4.5% of the deal. The other thing that I really started to do is charge an additional $9.95 transaction and handling fee on every deal that I did. So that added $75,000 just off of that little fee alone that I added to my production. But problem was, even though those deals were bigger, I was just building a bigger cage, a bigger trap on the increased margins. I had to use that money and I had to spend it differently to buy back my leverage. And one of the other things that I had to do, which is the second part, is I had to start focusing on residual revenue type deals. And f at first, I thought I was gonna build residual revenue by investing in more real estate. And look, I know a lot of my friends are big time investors across the country right now, and yeah, you can make a lot of money, but it's still transactional. Like if you're doing a wholesale or a fix and flip, it requires you building the system or involved in the deal. What I truly wanted was residual revenue. And my first approach to that was to buy rental properties, which I've made a ton of money there, but it is a slow growing path to residual revenue. And that's where I discovered, well, what is my real goal? Okay. So that was number three, get clear on what my outcome was. My outcome was I wanted money freedom and I wanted geographic freedom and I always want time freedom to do what I want, when I want, where I want. So that's where I started to get into building a personal brand or really an infopreneurship product for real estate agents. Meaning I could be in Florida or Brazil or Costa Rica and I could still sell a product to someone and still make a lot of money. So I mixed that with what I learned with where the go where the margins are bigger. And then I also started selling products that were residual. So the product I would sell paid me more dollars up front and it renewed year after year. And I had a lifetime value now of a client of $75,000 versus a lifetime client of maybe $20,000 when I was selling a real estate deal. Now, the fourth thing that I did is I partnered with real brokerage. And how that solved the problem for me was, is I was selling my entrepreneurship and agent attraction and mentorship. I now could put people into my network and I could get paid residually off those transactions. Now, fast forward, I have 1,600 plus 
members in the my network in real brokerage and I get paid on about 700 closed real estate deals every month. And the real benefit is if I don't work, if I don't show up, I still make $70,000 a month just in that piece alone. And in my academy, if I don't work, we still make $100,000. Last month, I made $175,000 and it wasn't even my best month. So what the moral of the story is, stop doing transactional work. It's the biggest mistake. And start to go where the margins are bigger and residual. And the only way you're gonna do that in a fast pace, I'm talking 12 to 24 months, get to 20 to $40,000 or more every single month residually is in the agent attraction space. So appreciate you being here. Make sure to like, comment down below. I wanna know what your thoughts are on this concept of agent attraction and is it an opportunity or is it a distraction right now? And make sure to share this video with someone that you think it might help. We'll see you later.